Well, yeah, thank you for having me, first of all. Yes, it did come as a surprise because uh, if you look at the grip uh, that the uh, Bongo family has had over Gabon for, for, for more than 50 years, you will think that uh, they, they, they seem to be uh, having you know things under on, on that control. But if, if you consider what's happening in West Africa and parts of Central Africa, um, then you shouldn't be too surprised um, considering the contagion effect of uh, military involvement in politics. How long do you think the coup leaders had been planning this? Well, I don't think that they've been planning it for so long. They could have been influenced by what they see happening elsewhere, uh, especially in Francophone countries, um, which they are part of. Um, but also I've probably looked to see, especially now that there was a coalition of, 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 of opposition parties fielding one candidate, there was hope that um, if the elections were free and fair, um, then it will be easy to remove um, uh, President um, Ali Bongo democratically. I'm sure they were um, irritated by the fact that, um, you know, he, the re elections were fraught with all kinds of putting him in power, perpetrating him in power, and they could have just taken the impetus of what's happening elsewhere in the continent to, um, to grab power. I think that's what they did. So I don't think there's been too much planning around this. So the presidential election then was fraudulent? Well, that's what the opposition claim, um, that it was fraught with a lot of um, irregularities, uh, apart from the fact that they did not allow, um, you know, inter both local and international observers to, to observe the elections. Uh, borders were closed, there were um, uh, curfews imposed on the, on the country. So, so it was um, done, you know, um, in, in what many described as a, in a non-transparent way. And I think that that may have influenced um, opposition perception that, as usual, as has been the case in previous elections, this was also rigged. Have the people been calling for political change for some time now? Um, yes, they have. And this is why you see a lot of um, um, rejoicing in, 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 in the streets, uh, a lot of them making joyful noises, um, shouting liberation, because for years now they've been um, uh, Ali Bongo's father, uh, Omar Bongo, um, ruled for 41, 42 years with, 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 a, with, with, with a tight fist um, and crushed all opposition. So it's been a culture of fear. He's been a bit more liberal, but also followed his father's footstep in terms of how they deal with the opposition. So there's been dissent um, and, and, and the, 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 the happiness you see on the streets of Libreville and other cities in Gabon today um, is not so much support for the military as much as it is for you know, the, 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 the cry of, of, of happiness, uh, freedom, that they've been liberated from the clutches of the Bongo family. Wow, they've been in power for more than 50 years. That's a long time. What do you think will happen to Ali Bongo now? Well, it depends. Um, my, my, my guess is that the, the military will not hang on to power for a very long time. Um, they would want to see, uh, oversee, possibly oversee a transition and uh, possibly try him for all kinds of crimes, including corruption, treason, as the case may be, depending on what they decide to, 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 to bring up against him, to try him and his son, to, to effectively end the um, Bongo dynasty in uh, the Gabonese politics, um, and then try to um, you know, ensure that there is a quick return to, to, to democracy. Well, Gabon has a population of some 2 million people, but its oil wealth is concentrated in the hands of a few, as I understand it. And the state of the economy, what's that like at the moment? Well, the, on, on paper, the economy seems to be doing uh, OK, uh, but the, the challenge, as this with uh, most other African states, is the fact that um, these um, these do not filter down to um, the, you know majority of the population. Um, over a third of the population live below um, poverty line. They are um, rich in agriculture. They also have um, manganese and timber and oil exports, uh, which should make them a rich country. 
However, um, the mismanagement of these resources the, uh, and concentration of the wealth of the country in the hands of a few, especially the Bongo family, has meant that, you know, um, there's a, a high level of poverty and inequality in the country, four million people that should actually be living um, like uh, kings and queens. Mm. Well, Gabon's coup is the eighth military takeover in Central and West Africa in three years. You mentioned this before. What could explain this? Well, look, um, there are both the internalist and externalist arguments. Um, the externalist arguments will be the influence of foreign foreign uh, powers like, like France, like the United States, uh, um, and, and, and the likes. But... Um, um, the internalist arguments are twofold. One, they are structural, and then they are also internal in terms of how um, the political elites have managed governance uh, in, in in that country. So the structural problem has to do with the fact that the state uh, in Africa uh, w w was never developmental in its purpose, and um, uh, you know that also produced a notion of governance that is parasitic and exploitative. So largely, you have people in government in power who see the state as an opportunity to self-enrich and, and exploit their own people, and this is what has been happening across the continent. Uh, so that's fundamental. B bad leadership, corruption, uh, uh, mismanagement of funds, uh, which lead to poverty and all armed conflict within the continent. So you have those as fundamental problems coming from you know, the structural state that was inherited from colonialism that was never really interrogated and repurposed in terms of what the state should be about, right? And then the the, the other problems uh, from the from the within the country is the fact that one family, like we said earlier has dominated the political space and actually misruled the country for over 56 years and people are just fed up. How have neighbouring countries responded? Why have we seen political reshuffling in some? Well, um, this is a growing trend um, in the continent right now. And I think that it has something to do with the fact that the young people of the continent are beginning to, um, um, you know, become more aware politically, more engaged politically, and um, they're trying to take their, their destiny in their own hands. And, and, and so you would, you would think that, of course, they want democracy. A recent Afrobarometer study showed that young people in the continent want democracy, but they want it to be free and fair and to be based on, on social justice and equity. Um, so the minute this doesn't happen, um, the frustrations uh, give rise um, you know, non-democratic means of 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 of, of taking over, uh, you know, um, a government which 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 they tend to um, support. You would then think that, given the growing trend of uh, military intervention in politics in, in in West Africa and Central Africa now, um, you would think that um, leaders in the continent uh, would be would be wiser and ensure that they do things properly. At least you would have thought that. Uh, Omar Bongo would have probably not rigged the elections or tried to even stay in power beyond his uh, uh, two terms in office. Um, however, he must have taken um, uh, control and the situation in Gabon for granted. Um, and, and this is the price that he is going to have to pay, unfortunately. Well, we watch with interest what happens next. Professor Chris Izike, thanks so much for your time. Thank you for having me.